Hello everyone, today's video is how I did this flamingo in pastels. So my main aim with this was I wanted to try and find a way that I could use my leftover pastel mat, the offcuts that you often get. I hate seeing waste and pastel mat as we know is, is quite expensive so I wanted to try and see if I could work really small in my pastels and just challenge myself to see how much detail I could still get working on this small scale. So the biggest tip for getting any kind of detail regardless of what size you're working on is keeping your pencil sharp but not that it's how you use your pencils so twist the pencils as you're using them the pastel mat has a bit of that toothier paper texture so by rotating your pencils you'll always help to keep the point as sharp as you can to limit how much you have to actually sharpen the pencils themselves because obviously that is that is quite time consuming so I did the background for this portrait in soft pastels, really light layer, started off with the lighter glow just behind the flamingo, building up with my darker colours on the edge. And then I added a, like a vignette effect, so I got an even darker shade of brown and just used my soft tools to really subtly darken the corners. So this here is the pit pastel, it's the flesh, the lighter coloured flesh colour. This is the Caran Dioche, it's a very light pink, it almost looks white if you didn't have a white next to it. So I'm just applying a really light base layer. Now, sometimes in my previous videos, you'll see that I'll use a soft pastel or a eye makeup applicator with the soft pastel sticks that I filed down on some sandpaper. Well, if you're working this small, it's not realistic to use that for something like this because it's just too big. You really need to just focus on using your pencils with a sharp point to get your base layers down for something like this. Now at this stage I'm not overly focusing on details, I just want to get in where my basic tones are and even though this is a really small area you can still see how much attention I'm paying to just this one area. There's many greys that there was a really subtle shade of green and it's a really light hand. That green over the top of the grey that I'd already put there will just warm up that to get a slightly warmer tone. So it's not just about putting one, one colour down even when you are working on something this small. So this is a photo that I just got from Pixabay. I did change the beak slightly. That was, it was in, in the ruffle of the, the neck feathers. So I wanted all that to be on show. So what I'm starting to do now is, as with all my other portraits you'll see, I break everything down into a small section. So once I did the beak and I got the basic shape of the eye in, I'm then working on the head. I'm capturing the darker shadow underneath the chin, because that's where the less light is hitting that area. It's casting a shadow where the, the beak and the head is turned downwards. Once I've got my base layer in, that's when I'm now starting to add these details on the edge, replicating where the feathers are ever so slightly poking out past the main set of feathers on the head. If I was to draw this one solid line, it would look more like a silhouette and I want this to be part of the background. The biggest tip for making it, if you if you look at your portraits and you feel like it just looks like it's stuck and it's not part of the background, it is often because for two reasons. One, you don't have your detail overlap in the background. And the second is you've created a halo and that is often because you've done the subject first and then you've put your background in and it's a little bit then difficult, more difficult to get your background close right up to the subject because you're then obviously worried about overlapping onto details that you might have been focusing on on the, on the flamingo or, or the subject that you've got on your portrait at that time. If you do end up with a halo effect around your subject and if that's the look you're going for, absolutely perfect. Now what I mean by halo, not, not this glow on the background like what I've created, but if I was to do the background first and then you gradually work in towards the subject, you get like a whiter, lighter ring around your subject and that's just whether you haven't been able to get the background as close. If that has happened, that's you know you can fix it. I would in that situation use your pastel pencils and try and mix a well replicate a color that you can find out of the various brands that you might have a color that closely matches now you can layer your pencils to try and match that color as closely as you can once you've got that pigment down use your soft tools or your blending tools whatever you've got to blend out that pencil back into your background and then you should then create that nice soft transition from the very edge of your subject to the edge of the paper 
So once I've got my base layers of pinks down, I'm going over now that with the on the neck there with my lighter shade of pink that's that karen diosh pink and like i said that's the one that if you put it next to their chinese white you then only notice that it's pink but without that it does just look white the reason why i've done that is because at the end i will use my karen diosh chinese white pastel pencil for the very brightest highlights that is the one with the softer pigment so it shows up that much more opaque it's that much more whiter so here I mix in various shades of pinks and pinks virgin on the more orange scale as well. And then I'm mixing in with a really light hand, a light shade of purple. This there, that was more of a, a pink that was on the red side of the colour wheel. And that's just to provide that much more richness. I want to create the illusion of a shadow where the fur gets the fur, sorry, the feathers are darker in this area, but you don't want to go with black because black will mud up this area and you won't get the effect. So if you're working on something like this, you want to be using purples, darker reds, could put mortem type colours to get your shadows in. If this was a cooler subject and on the opposite end of the colour wheel, so this is very much with your warm tones, you'd be using blues and purples to put in your shadows. So this here is the very brightest highlight. This is where the most of the light is catching the back of the flamingo. So I've put that light pink down and then I'm going over with that pit pastel, the flesh pink, the lighter version, to get a soft transition between the lighter area and the mid-tone as it starts curving round to get darker on the side of his body. So this is a slightly larger area, so I'm now able to use my finger there to push some of that pastel and blend it together right into, get into the tooth of the paper. This is another slightly darker pink. It's more of a darker fleshy tone. And as I've mentioned on my previous videos, trying to pick and get the exact same colour as what I've done here is not important. It's your values. Making sure you capture the shadow underneath the, the neck and the chin as it curves round to the very edge of the neck and attaches to the body, like what I'm doing here. Capturing these differences in tone is what will make it more realistic. If I made this part of his body the same lightness in tone as his neck it will look flat it won't create that illusion that the neck is curving in a slightly different angle there and attaching to the body so it's differences like that that's going to make your artwork realistic over other than color so you can see it's very much a layering process i've just added a really subtle shade of a, a yellow there just because i wanted to capture that vibrancy and the good thing is with pastels, you can mix like what you can with paint on a palette. So by mixing with a really light hand, that shade of yellow with those already redder and pinker tones, you're creating an orangey type of colour without even having to use an orange. That's that Karen Diosh pink again. This is the light purple that I mentioned. And I'm paying really close attention to my reference photo. You can still see this is a really small area. This is not a big portrait at all. This is four inches by eight inches. And although it's eight inches long, the body is only, you know, what, three inches? Four, you know, it's, it's, it's not big at all because obviously I've got to have that length because of the long leg and the little bit of water that you'll see me put in at the end. But um, this is not a massive area, but by paying really close attention with a really light hand and sharper pencils, you can create, I think, a nice amount of detail, which can be difficult with pastels. Before I started using pastels, which I'm, I'm still relatively new, you know, I've only probably been using them for coming up to hmm, maybe 10 months, 11 months. And before that was my, I was using colour pencils and that is much easier to keep a sharper point. And when I first used pastels, I really struggled. I honestly thought I'd wasted all my money buying these sets of pastel pencils or the paper that I bought because I, sh I assumed that I'd be able to use them. But I did have to retrain the way that I use the pencils and focus in on keeping my pencil sharp. And, you know, it's tricky because with colour pencils, that is very easy to achieve. But, however, I now don't use colour pencils very often because I love the versatility of pastels. Being able to layer light on top of dark is a game changer. I think it, me personally, 
I've been able to create more realism in my work by by working in that way now you can obviously do that with color pencil but it is very hard it's much harder to do it you have to pay really close attention to your layers and if you put a darker layer down first with color pencils it's very hard to put your light your lights back on top so I love working in pastels what well, is my favorite medium now I think that and then acrylics is ever so slightly you know a runner up to it so with this what I wanted to do I just wanted to create an illusion of water so I've used the same pink that I have in the darkest areas of the flamingo I put that layer down first and I've added a very subtle shade of blue because obviously I still wanted to create that illusion of water but I wanted to capture the strong reflection that you would see from that light bouncing down from the colour that would then show on the water itself. Once you've put that pink in, you can go over, like what I'm doing here, with some lighter tones, some blues, some purples, to replicate the, the, the colour of the water that would naturally be there. By adding these highlights in, you are just enhancing that detail even more now i wanted this bit to be out of focus because i wanted the main focus to be on the flamingo so a big tip when you're drawing still water like this draw your lines horizontal and straight don't start drawing them sloping off to one side slightly diagonal because you're drawing slanted water unless obviously you're drawing ripples and movement of water that is where you'll get a change of direction but when you're drawing still and flat calm water like this don't draw it wonky i hope this video was of use i really did enjoy working on the smaller scale just to test how much detail i could get in on a small portrait um don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe hit the bell button if you want to get notified of future content um, i just want to mention as well i am in the process of setting up a patreon channel so if that's of any interest then don't hesitate to pop me an email or a comment below um, and i can get back to you with some more information on that thank you for watching bye